you know, we were talking about the kinds of movies we liked and like sort of the tones that we liked and uh, it was just like a back and forth that spiraled out of that. Yeah, there's a lot of us just talking about our favorite horror movies and kind of like, what would be like kind of our ultimate combined perfect horror movie, essentially action horror film, and this is what we came up with. <laughs> This it's, uh, it's it's a pretty badass gym to run for your life for a month. <laughs> and uh, the entire process from the build, uh, we had a bit of a stutter start to this. So going in, uh, I did the build for what was going to become the monster, even though I didn't get to actually do that monster stuff, which would have been so much fun. Um, but looking at actual practical monsters is so much easier to deal with. Um, than tennis balls on sticks and the imaginary someone off screen reading a piece of paper going, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, it just it blends into the whole world in a much easier way. But it's a long trying process. The builds are outstanding. I mean, I've done a ton of crosswork across the board over the years, and this is the best stuff I've ever been a part of. Uh, I mean, like, the story kind of came out of us talking about different things we liked. Certainly H.P. Lovecraft came up, a lot of weird fiction, that kind of stuff. I was into Thomas Ligotti and uh, Clark Ashton Smith, stuff like that. Uh, there were certainly movies that uh, Steve and I, like, kind of are crossover interests, a lot of, like, Japanese horror movies. We were really interested in kind of, like, uncanny horror, I would say. Like, yeah, well, movies like The Keep are a good example, stuff that has like re really bizarre mythologies that are never fully explained. Uh, I think that was like a key component for a movie like this, was to like, build a universe that we only see like glimpses of and never really get the full picture, because I feel like that's a key component to building a satisfying horror film. And I would say also, uh, I think we kind of longed for a time when the, there weren't like rules in horror movies so much, where it could kind of go anywhere. And uh, I think sort of the stranger like turns and like more avant-garde sort of things is kind of what interested us a little bit. Uh, okay, the question is, was there a point where we said, no, that would be too far? Steve no. desperately wants to. <laughs> you should have seen the original <laughs> for the original treatment, there was stuff in there that was like unfilmable. And we're just like, yeah, obviously this has to be in the movie, but practicality dictated otherwise. Uh, it's a problem common, uh, like in a lot of films, where you build your monsters and they just aren't lit properly. People don't really know how to shoot them. That's like ninety percent of what makes a creature work. And so, in this film, we knew from the beginning we want everything hidden in shadows, like lit as dark as possible, because movies like The Thing work best when everything's like edge lit and it's obscurity, you don't really know what you're looking at. So we never wanted to go all out and show something 100%. We always wanted to obscure things, so you're never quite sure what you're looking at, because that's what makes it scary. In the point. And Such a good question. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to pass that one down there. No? <laughs> There you go. You heard it from Ken. 20 days. Um, yeah, no overtime. But there was overtime one day that me and Steve paid for out of our own. Which was great. Uh, and then it was like a series of insert days later on when we realized how much stuff we needed. Yeah, it was ironic. This was our like first movie with an actual budget. And at the end of it all, we still ended up shooting. Kind of on our own in a tiny little studio space, fumbling around, slinging blood back and forth. So, really, it's just the same old shit all over. <laughs> we did everything ourselves by the end of this movie. And there's, it's unbelievable some of the shots that made it into this. There's literally shots of like me strangling Steve on our friend's apartment floor. <laughs> which, I don't know, it's absurd that it made it in. And you guys were more successful than many filmmakers you see today don't hit their targets, but you definitely did it, and it was a fantastic success story and inspiration for a lot of people. We really didn't want to do a campaign. We were so opposed to it, uh, which is maybe why it worked out, because we really put a lot of effort into making sure we 
delivered some satisfying perks and really made it appealing to people. I think the fact that it wasn't just, you know, give us money for our movie and it was more about supporting the creature effects, I think that gave us a good angle that appealed to people. And it was, like, like it was a logical decision because we weren't able to get financing in time to build our creatures or to have a proper window of time to build the creatures. So we basically had to do crowdfunding, otherwise the movie wouldn't have gotten made. So thanks everyone who contributed. everybody here like the cast in this movie is so unreal we got so lucky and that was like the one thing in the movie that worked out easily for us uh, they were such a pleasure to work with and I would say back to the creature question if you feel like the move the monsters in this movie work it is like solely because of these guys selling it not because of the monsters that's a great question, Casey. <laughs> yes, you'll be able to see it in the theater. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh. Okay. That's a pretty big promise. <laughs> On that note, give it up for the wonderful <laughs> boys. Join us at the top.